So, I, hello, my name is James, and I am here to refute the claim that the death penalty should be abolished in the United States. Before I get into my own case, I will present <coughs> the flaws in my um, opponent's case. The first issue that he brought up is that the death penalty is too costly. This is true, but life imprisonment, imprisonment may be costly in other ways. According to Bureau of Justice Statistics, for the third consecutive year, the number of inmates who died in state prisons and local jail increased, and a total of 4,446 inmates died in 2013, an increase in deaths of 131, an increase of 131 deaths from 2012. So this is evidence that offenders <coughs> sent to life in prison may be more, um, may be more violent and will cause more harm than prisoners on death row. It also there is also proof that prisoners in, pr in prison who are less malicious suffer with serious offenders who are not put on death row. And the New York Times reports that vicious murderers who prey on the helpless and vulnerable, once captured, become perfectly well-behaved inmates. Well-behaved. All right, um, our, the second point that our opponent brought up is that the death penalty does not deter crime. This is not true. A study um, that the Washington Post cites that in 2006, uh, study done in 2003 and was re-examined in 2006 found that each execution in the United States results in five fewer homicides and commuting a death sentence means five more homicides. And I will also go into this a little more as that is one of the main points of my case. And his, their last point is that the death penalty takes far too long to execute. Our, while this may be true, they are, the death penalty is constantly growing less common in the United States. The death penalty is more rare than it used to be. Death sentences have declined by 75% since their peak in 1996, and only nine states carried out executions in 2013. Now that I have gone over the flaws in my opponent's case, I will go, out, I will go through my own. My first, my first um, <coughs> point is that the death penalty deters crime. My first piece of evidence for this is that is from the Washington Post article that I cited before, is that a series of academic studies over the last half dozen years claimed to settle a once wholly debated argument, whether the death penalty acts as a deterrent to murder, the Post says. The analysis say yes, they count between 3 and 18 lives that could be saved by the execution of each convicted killer. Again, to go back to the 2003 study that again was re-examined in 2006, that said that with five few that each execution results in five fewer homicides and commuting a death sentences results in five more. My uh, sub point C is that the quicker the execution, the bigger deterrence. And from a from David Mulhouse and PhD says on the Heritage Foundation, <laughs> shorter waits on death row are associated with increased deterrence. For each additional 2.75 year reduction in the death row wait until execution, one murder is deterred. So this has effectively shown that the death penalty does deter murder and crime. Our second point is that, in, that, in, that the death penalty is just. In fact, in our first point, or our first sub point, is that incarceration is morally wrong for murderers. And in the fact that a sentence of life imprisonment comes with a life in an air-conditioned, cable-equipped prison where a prisoner gets free meals three times a day, personal recreation time, and regular visits with family and friends is a slap on the wrist of morality, as Casey Carmichael from the Gale Group says. But not only this, is, this will go into our second sub-point, that the death penalty is permissible by Christian values. According to Romans 3, 13, 3 through 5, it's, it says, For rulers who are not a terror to conduct good but to bad, why would you have no fear of who is in authority? Then do what is good, and you will receive his approval, for he is God's servant for, you, for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain. He is the servant of God to execute his wrath on the wrongdoer. Our third point in why the death penalty is moral is that it is also constitutional. 
According to Justice Anthony, Antonin Scalia, the Fifth Amendment provides that no person shall be held to answer for a capital crime unless on a presenter or indictment of a grand jury, nor be deprived of life without the due process of law. This clearly permits the death penalty to be imposed and establishes beyond doubt that the death penalty is, one of the, is not one of the cruel and unusual punishes, punishments prohibited by the Eighth Amendment. How much time do I have? A minute and a half. Okay, so our last point is that the death penalty is not disproportionate to African Americans. We pro we can our first sub point is that African Americans, um, uh, while they were they can um, make up fifty two percent of the uh, agitators of murder and non negligent manslaughter where whites were only 45.3%. That explains why they are disproportionately uh, put on death row. Also, the death penalty is also driven by heinousness of crime, not race. David Mulhausen, PhD of the Heretic Foundation, also states that a study done by Rand concludes that the findings support the view that decisions to seek the death penalty are driven by characteristics of crime rather than race. <laughs> also from David Mulhouse and PhD is that the death penalty charges contain little to no racist factors. According to a study done or an analysis done by Professor Burke, for both capital charges and death sentences, race either played no no role or a small role that is very difficult to specify. In short, it is very difficult to find convincing evidence for racial effects in in data and in the Maryland data, and if there are any, they may not be additive. Thus, um, concluding that the death penalty um, charges contain little to no racist factors. Um, Time. Thank you.